Now, the cost to address the country's road maintenance backlog has more than doubled to 416 billion rand. Transport economist Matthew Townshend presented those figures at the uh, Southern African Transport Conference in Pretoria this week. It's been a story we've been running all day. Well, he joins me now. Uh, Matthew, thanks indeed uh, for talking to us. I mean, this really is a staggering figure, more than doubling, as I understand it, than the figure that government gave us about six years ago. How did you get to this number? Uh, correct, Devin. 416 billion rand is a significant amount of money. The story for how the backlog has got there, I think it's almost a 30-year story. This isn't an overnight development. Um, over the last 30 years, there's been a combination of underfunding of road, ma road maintenance and then also inadequate road maintenance practices. That led us to the point where in 2013, um, Koto published a report, which is the widely publicized figure, of a backlog of 197 billion rand. Now, since then, in each of those five years since that period, we know that the provincial and local government roads have been underfunded throughout that period. So that has led to a gradual decline in network quality. And also since that period, a, a vast amount of new network data has become available. And with factoring that information into the calculation, we get to this 416 billion, which, as you say, is, is almost double the figure which was previously reported. And on that reported figure, what's, what's important to mention on that is that is the framing number, which yeah. is in the 2018 draft uh, roads policy for South Africa. Now, that document is setting network strategies in terms of maintenance and funding. And if we don't have the correct number, we're going to end up with the wrong maintenance strategies, we're going to end up with the wrong financing tools, and we're going to end up with the wrong financing rates for the tools that we choose. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's, it's very important to have the right number when you're planning these. Now, as I understand it, as far as our highway networks are concerned, we're basically world class in terms of the national road network. The problem really lies in these provincial and regional roads. What went wrong? Um, correct, Evan. I think the, the fact that Sanrail have maintained a world-class network um, is a fact, and when you drive on those roads, it's, it's obvious. In the provincial and local governments, and this is the, the challenge that we now need to face, uh, they have the biggest capacity constraints. They've got the largest networks to manage and complex networks with different surface types. Yeah. Um, they've got different traffic volumes. So in conjunction with that, they've also got the biggest skills shortages. So that, I think, has compounded the problem to where what we're seeing is about almost the entire backlog concentrated in provincial and local government. Uh, what we're seeing is about two-thirds of that backlog is on gravel roads, and about three-quarters of the backlog is on low-volume roads. So that is all giving us information to shift the focus down to where we really need to be looking in terms of analyzing and solving this problem. And we've heard this before, that skill shortage to actually address the problem is a huge deficit. But I mean, the deficit of 416 billion, one wonders, in an economy like ours, where do we get the money? Now, I see you've suggested some, some, some uh, uh, recommendations put forward there, but I mean, that's, that's not going to go down in terms of the uh, population. Yeah, we're looking at rising, raising VAT perhaps, um, and also looking at the fuel levy. Just talk to us through that. Perfect. So what we did there, Devin, was we wanted to give an economic frame yeah. for the problem so yeah. that people could, could understand it. Yeah. So what this backlog essentially works out to is almost the, the, the entire new economic stimulus and recovery package proposed by President Ramaphosa. Now that... Um, from an infrastructure perspective, it's not an option to transfer that entire amount into the road maintenance backlog. Um, to address it over a five-year period would also translate into a 4% increase in VAT. Now, from a macroeconomic cost perspective, again, these are not options. What we are not suggesting from this work is, is that we can solve this problem from throwing money at it. We have got to the point where the road maintenance backlog is so large that the only way to get a handle on this is to refocus to prioritization exercises. And at UCT, we're aware of our social responsibility to provide solutions to this problem. And under the expert guidance of Professor Don Ross, um, over the last seven years, what we've been doing is developing 
a suite of tools and mechanisms that, if applied properly, the provincial and municipal governments can apply to achieve a number of important outcomes. And just to briefly touch on those, the first of those is when we go through this extensive prioritization exercise to make sure that, number one, the poor are protected, yeah. that the roads that they need to to satisfy their constitutional right to access basic services, schools and hospitals, that those are first and foremost provided. We've looked at those and we've worked out that you can address that need and still have enough budget left that we can realistically provide um, a high number of maintenance projects on roads that are supportive of economic growth in the country. And we've been developing all of this work for the last seven years, and we're looking forward to hopefully implementing it with the Department of Transport. Matthew, thanks very much indeed for...